Здравствуйте, это Global Media Life, и с вами я, Карин Забарова, веду онлайн-трансляцию с 5-го международной научно-практической конференции интеллектуальной транспортной системы «Казань-2018». В ближайшие два дня мы будем рассказывать, что же происходит прямо здесь, сейчас, в эту минуту, с места событий. Мы открываем выставку в рамках нашей международной конференции. I would like to uh, welcome you to this fifth edition of the ITS Congress uh, here in Kazan. ITS Forum Kazan 2018 объявляется открытым! А на протяжении двух дней мы будем общаться с экспертами, с учеными, для того, чтобы понять, что такое ИТС. Надо сказать, что форум ITS 2018 – это международная научно-практическая конференция. Она затрагивает важную тему, она борется, прорабатывает а главное, решает современные проблемы безопасности жизнедеятельности вообще и на дорогах в частности. Я, Скотт, мой Name ist Matthias Schmidt, freue mich heute hier. Ja, unser Unternehmen Analyzer Pro beschäftigt sich mit der Rekonstruktion und Berechnung von Straßenverkehrsunfällen. Das ist ein sehr, eine sehr gute Frage. Der Punkt ist der, dass bei einem Straßenverkehrsunfall heute oft ein Unfall auf den ersten Blick sehr eindeutig erscheint und wenn er nicht korrekt nachgerechnet und nachvollzogen wird, oftmals es zu falschen Urteilen im Rechtsbereich kommen kann, was natürlich sehr gravierende Aus, ja, Auswirkungen hat. Problematik situationen Zentren ist heute sehr aktuell für die Entwicklung unserer Stadt. Und in der Sektion, die ich nach я в своем докладе более конкретно хочу рассказать о новых подходах по предоставлению услуг ситуационных центров в облачной среде. Как бы вы описали ИТС так, чтобы каждый человек понял, что такое? Это не очень сложно сделать. Вот если согласиться с тем, что будущее транспортных систем создается сейчас, то нужна та система знаний, которая позволит перевести нас из того, что было еще вчера, в то, что будет уже завтра. Вот ИТС это тот самый мостик, который переводит совершенно новое мышление. Это и технический аспект, то есть это новые инженерные системы, они вдоль дорог ставятся, мы их видим. Это и новые транспортные средства, это и новая философия транспортного обслуживания. Это совершенно новая концепция создания пространства удобного проживания. То есть вот сегодня ИТС является одной из тех инженерных, одним из тех инженерных системных понятий, которые начинают людей приучать к мысли о том, что все быстро, очень интенсивно меняется. ИТС – это про очень быстрый переход. Ведущие российские и зарубежные специалисты, ученые, инженеры, разработчики и эксперты в области развития ситуационных центров и транспортных систем будут обсуждать перспективные направления научных исследований и достигнутые практические результаты развития последующих направлений. Безопасность и организация дорожного движения, транспортной системы в крупных городах и регионах. Интермодальные и мультимодальные перевозки, автоматизированные дороги, автоматизированное управление, автоматизированное вождение, организация парковочного пространства, мобильные приложения, система GLONASS, GPRS и транспорт, неопределенно структурированные данные большего объема и открытые данные, облачные вычисления, хранение данных образования ИТС и информационная безопасность. Роль ИТС в цифровой экономике. Слово для приветствия предоставляется президенту Республики Татарстан, доктору экономических наук Миниханову Рустаму Гаевичу. Убежден, конференция станет конструктивной площадкой для обсуждения среди специалистов и создаст необходимый импульс для построения единой концепции ITS и ситуационных центров в нашей стране и в мире. 
Примите поздравления с началом работы 5-й международной научно-практической конференции «Современные проблемы безопасности жизнедеятельности, интеллектуальные транспортные системы и ситуационные центры». Не в первый раз на этой площадке в городе Казани специалисты в области развития транспортных систем имеют возможность обсудить применение высоких технологий на практике. С 2010 года проводится конференция «Современные проблемы безопасности жизнедеятельности». Обеспечение безопасности жизнедеятельности требует значительных финансовых вложений, безошибочного отбора и внедрения эффективных технологий, к которым можно отнести элементы ситуационных центров, профессионального опыта, практического взаимодействия ученых и специалистов. It's the third time that Ertico is participating in this event out of the five times, and uh, we hope to continue strongly in the future. Расскажите, пожалуйста, об особенностях татарстанского мобильного приложения Народный инспектор. Это приложение, которое позволяет с использованием механизмов краудсорсинга собирать информацию о нарушениях правил дорожного движения и правил благоустройства городов и населенных пунктов Республики Татарстан. В основу системы положен очень простой механизм, который позволяет всем жителям республики осуществлять запись того или иного правонарушения, которое они увидели. Это более 14 составов, которые сегодня доступны для фиксации на это мобильное приложение. Вот так оно выглядит, очень простое. Очень простая регистрация. Более того, для зарегистрированных на портале государственных и муниципальных услуг Республики Татарстан не требуется дополнительная авторизация. Они уже могут использовать атрибуты доступа ранее зарегистрированных и полученных на регистрации на портале. We believe that uh, at the moment most of the uh, accidents are due to uh, driver uh, misbehavior or wrong, wrong uh, action. Um. So we think that uh, uh, going to a better awareness of the driver and a better control of his, uh, of his driving task. And at Renault, uh, we, we do believe that we need also Uh, to monitor the, the driver in order to, to check that the driver is still capable to take over the driving task uh, when, the, the, when it's needed, when it's required. And, uh, and the, and the, and the sec second uh, uh, conditions of this automated driving uh, uh, deployment is of also to develop what we call minimum risk maneuver So in case of uh, driver uh, failures or, what, or system failures, then we have very safe maneuver to, uh, to protect the car, to protect the other vehicles. The road of the future is a very modern one. I'm really convinced that there's no computer which can make so many mistakes than a human being. And so it's really the future to make autonomous driving because you need it. On the one hand side, you don't have enough truck drivers, you don't have enough taxi drivers. We have more need for mobility and so we have a new focus on these autonomous vehicles. Ну, не секрет, что интеллектуальные транспортные системы, они а, существенно влияют и оказывают нам колоссальную помощь в вопросах обеспечения комплексной безопасности жизнедеятельности населения. Это легко можно объяснить тем, что а, так как у нас в Казани довольно-таки продвинутая эта система находится, мы участвовали а, в разработке и практическом применении так называемой системы «Зеленый коридор», которая обеспечивала 
пожарно-спасательном подразделении своевременное прибытие к объекту или к месту выяснения оперативных событий для того, чтобы своевременно оказать помощь пострадавшим, оказать помощь необходимую при ликвидации здоровья транспортных шествий и так далее. Поэтому я считаю, то, что наши силы и средства, они как раз таки непосредственно работают в этой области. Творится история, создаются новые системы, правильно? Да, конечно. Ну, и на нашем мероприятии было заметно присутствие многих иностранных специалистов из различных фирм, которые ну, с помощью, зная их опыт, мы не копируем их процесс, а уже опережаем их, то есть зная то, что у них внедрено, мы хотим сегодня в Татарстане внедрить на шаг вперед. Ну что ж, а сегодня, 28 февраля, участники форума собрались и поехали на практические площадки. Такие как IT-парк, университет Иннополис, АСУД город Казань, ЦАФАП ГИБДД, беспилотный КАМАЗ, интегрированная система контроля, весогабаритных параметров, нарушений ПДД и оплаты за проезд. Ситуационный центр президента Республики Татарстан и правительства Республики Татарстан. Центр управления в кризисных ситуациях МЧС РФ по Республике Татарстан. Система автоматической фиксации нарушений скоростного режима робот на базе автомобиля «Ларгус». Центр оформления ДТП. Показательное выступление автомоделистов. Расскажите, пожалуйста, что такое беспилотный КАМАЗ, как он существует, как он передвигается? Добрый день. Ну, сегодня мы в рамках конференции продемонстрируем на рабочей площадке наш автомобиль КАМАЗ. Беспилотный КАМАЗ, как известно, этот автомобиль и уже в беспилотном режиме у нас существует два с половиной года. И два года назад мы как раз здесь тоже демонстрировали. Это были наши первые разработки. Мы достаточно продвинулись в разработке алгоритмов, режимов беспилотного управления. И будет возможность продемонстрировать вот все эти наши наработки на автомобиле, в котором на самом деле не будет уже водителя. Скажите, пожалуйста, какую максимальную скорость КАМАЗ может э, достичь? В дистанционном режиме 60 км в час, в автономном режиме 40. А что еще э, с технической стороны э, обычному обывателю надо знать? Э, здесь установлены ряд сенсорики, которые дублируют друг друга. За счет этого мы получаем полную э, замену. Если одна сенсорика отказывает, у нас сразу подключается следующая. Плюс установлена нейронная сеть. Это 
начальный этап искусственного интеллекта, что позволяет нам не только обижать препятствия, но и при этом проделывать маршрут так. Например, вот вы видим перед нами фишки, две фишки. Он просчитывает маршрут, как ему объехать, слева или справа. И наиболее выгодный маршрут он уже начинает объезжать. Если он видит пешехода, он определяет расстояние. И если это расстояние опасное, он начинает останавливаться. Если это расстояние безопасное, он просто снижает скорость. What we see is that there's, uh, there's some very interesting developments going, going on in Russia. Uh, it's something where we can learn from, from uh, the IT developments that are going on in Russia, for instance. And at the same time, our partner here can also learn from the, the developments in the rest of Europe and how ITS could be deployed in, uh, locally here or in, in Russia in total. Uh, I think there are very interesting uh, perspective in uh, cooperation, uh, especially for what concerns uh, digitalization, uh, for uh, to support uh, trade. Uh, and I think a very important part is uh, the link between Europe and China crossing uh, uh, Russia, and uh, the recently um, decision of the Russian government to um, join the ECMR, the Electronic Consignment Note uh, Convention, UN Convention is a clear sign that this cooperation is possible. Ну, во-первых, надо сказать, что такая популярная форма, как применение практических площадок, она нашла уже более конкретную массу участия участников совещания. Если в 2016 году практические площадки были, но такого вот массового посещения не было, то надо сказать, что сегодня эти практические площадки уже пользуются спросом. Появились дополнительные практические площадки, это которые связаны с мобильным так скажем, транспортным средством, мобильная система комплекса фотофиксации, которая определяет нарушители движения, установленные транспортном средстве. Появился дополнительный значит, ситуационный центр президента Республики Татарстан. Этих площадок раньше не было. По самой процедуре проведения конференции хотел бы отметить, что от стандартных пленарных заседаний, закрытий, соответственно, секционных так скажем, заседаний прошла пленарная дискуссия. Это формат больше, наверное, европейский, когда в рамках обсуждения экспертов обсуждается проблема, та или иная проблема. В данном случае был акцент сделан на беспилотное движение, на автоматизированное движение. И мы считаем, что панельная дискуссия тоже удалась. И в процессе обсуждения разговоров экспертов выяснилось, что ну, Российская Федерация, хотя мы немного отстаем, но тоже есть наработки, есть специалисты, которые эти вопросы занимаются. Ну и необходимо сказать, что все-таки сегодня есть понимание, в целом, что по ком пути идти в направлении ТС. И самое главное, значит, первый наш пробный шаг, когда в 2016 году мы проводили хакатон, и в результате мы, так скажем, нашли отклик в лесе молодых людей, которые участвовали со своими проектами в рамках хакатона. Она исчисляется десятками команд, десятками участников. Все-таки эта конференция подтвердила о том, что это нужно делать, молодые люди есть, они стремятся изобретать за короткое время, что-то получить. Данное событие является важным не только для Казани, но и для России в целом. Хочется выразить благодарность всем экспертам, всем ученым и участникам, студентам данного форума, в том числе самое важное вам, Рюкат Нургалеевич, за то, что мы стали участником, участниками данного события. На этом мы официально закрываем нашу онлайн-трансляцию форум ITS-2018 Казань. С вами была Карина Забарова. До скорых встреч!
Dear colleagues, I'm warmly welcoming you on behalf of the Republic of Tatarstan, the digital hub and hotspot of innovations from the Russian Federation. Today we are beginning the series of webinars preparing towards Kazan Digital Week 2020. The virtual format will help us to preserve the offline forum possibilities, adding virtual opportunities, bringing in some five dimensions, such as the application of ITS in digital transformation, situational centers providing for uninterrupted data collection and analysis of large data modeling de event development. Third dimension is cybersecurity, preventive response to potential threats, artificial intuition. Fourth dimension, ECOS, fintech ecosystem, digital finance technologies, products, and intellectual banking. Fifth, innovations integrated into business uh, digital direct business digital technologies for various projects and reinvestment of income the forum will be taking place in the format of discussions round tables and exhibits we will be supplementing this with technical visits to leading industrial sites of tatarstan as well as city tours dear colleagues this year tatarstan is celebrating 100th anniversary of its status as tatarstan autonomous soviet socialist republic Thus, we would invite you to get acquainted with Kazan, the place of the upcoming forum. I would like to remind that detailed information about contacts, registration, as well as other materials are available at kazandigitalweek.ru as well as kazandigitalweek.com. Uh, let me also remind that you are capable of asking questions to our speakers in the broadcast chat. Once complete, you'll be able to ask them questions. Dear colleagues, the webinar is going in both Russian and English. You were previously instructed on connection to simultaneous interpretation. I would like to start the webinar and with great pleasure introducing our first speaker, Jacob Bansgaard, Director General of Ertico ITS Europe. 
intellectual systems are transport systems are developing and becoming part of our life components of ITS are becoming serial production and commercial available products active implementation of those lowers transportation costs uh, cost of uh, various uh, gross internal product makes our transportation more comfortable and safer lowering various emissions. I'd like to speak about Ertico ITS Europe. It was established in 1991 on, on the initiative of 15 leaders of intellectual transportation systems. Within its 30 years of activity, it has implemented dozens of European projects, conducted 38 world as well as European congresses, increased the number of members from 15 to 120, to keep position uh, becoming an important player in various public consultations and political agencies, has relationships with Europe, US, Japan, Russia, and China. Mr. Jakob Bansgard is head of the association since 2017, is very experienced in the area of transport and mobility, responsible for implementation of ITS at China, India, Russia, and Brazil markets. Uh, are responsible for global campaign for the implementation of various smart mobility in Europe. Mr. Bansgard, the floor is yours. I'm inviting you to characterize the key achievements and prospects of Europe in creation and promotion of electrical transport systems. Friends and colleagues from Tatarstan and Russia, uh, Mr. Minirano, thank you very much for inviting Ertiko and me to speak at, at this uh, session here. I'm really honored to be part of the work that we do together on ITS with Tatarstan in Kazan. And I would like to give you a few words on what is happening in Europe uh, and what we are doing from the side of Ertiko at these uh, challenging times. First of all, I would like to say a few words about the changes that have happened in the last couple of months. Uh, it has been a challenge here as it has for you, I'm sure. Uh, there's been a lot of disruption in the mobility sector and this disruption is, uh, is now changing the way we have been looking at, at mobility, urban mobility especially. And we have now to, to revisit uh, some of the activities we did before and look at what will the new normal be when we come out of the COVID-19 crisis. So first of all, the economic downturn uh, around the world has affected all sectors, also all the sectors in Ertico. It's affecting, of course, our travel and event impact. But it's also changes, changing uh, slightly in the policy priorities and uh, also in the mobility demands from the user side 
uh, in this time where people have to work from home, move differently than before. So this has been creating a, a, a new normal uh, we are going to see in a couple of months time when this is hopefully over, we will see what are the, the new way that we, we are going to uh, reconstruct the mobility and the, the urban environment after COVID-19. From the vertical side, what we have been focusing on is mainly supporting our partners to get through this crisis. We have also taken all activities online, and that means including events and training activities. We are use, looking now uh, very much focusing on user-centric services, micromobility, because there has been a high demand for this during the COVID-19 crisis. And we think that after, after the opening up of the mobility sector, there will still be quite a focus on the user-centric services. Startup community is something we are continuing to work with. Uh, logistics sector is something that we have seen some challenges for the logistics sector for cross-border uh, connectivity, uh, both physical and digital. And uh, we also see changes in the urban mobility planning happening at the moment. We're trying to adapt to the new way of uh, possible uh, mobility. Um, we are working closely with the European Commission on the funding injection to the mobility developments and we have different programs running in Europe that we can use for this and we as Urgical with our partners are very much taking the, the opportunity there to make sure that we are all together working on defining the future of mobility. For the Congress side, uh, the Article Congress is quite known for a place for stakeholders to come together to network and to uh, show uh, to to take stock on the, the latest developments in ITS and to share between them on the research and development side so for that has been uh, drastically challenged now we have had to postpone our european congress in lisbon that was planned for may it will now take place in 2023 we unfortunately also had to postpone the Congress in Kazan, Russia, which will now take place in 2022. And the World Congress in uh, Los Angeles that was supposed to take place in October this year has also been postponed to 2022. So now we are working full speed on uh, our way to Hamburg in 2021. And this is uh, an event where we expect more than 15,000 people to come together. And I think there will be quite an interest in coming together again and to share uh, developments. Let me just mention three topics that we are working on very much at the moment. One is our Urgico City Moonshot. The City Moonshot is an opportunity for us to work with 300 cities around the world. And we are closely cooperating with these cities on defining uh, some uh, topics where we as uh, the ITS community can work together with the cities on developing the future for the city. And we are looking at activities like uh, emissions, uh, mobility as a service and urban planning. So this is something where we have already worked uh, with, closely with cities through our projects in the past and through our congresses. And this Urgical City Moonshot will just further strengthen the link between the Attico community and the cities around the world. Another activity I would like to mention is our Attico Academy. The Attico Academy was doing already online courses before the lockdown. We just started uh, with some on-site courses as well. I was uh, so uh, lucky to participate in the beginning of March in Turkey in, in one of these sessions. and. Uh, there we give the opportunity to authorities to get insight into what is happening in the ITS developments and how can ITS solutions help with city challenges. And we have a, a whole range of, of topics. I mentioned some of them here, mobility as a service, digital freight, electromobility, uh, cooperative ITS and traffic management. So we are working closely mainly with authorities and also with the ITS experts to put together programs that can help uh, the 
cities, countries, regions, uh, to, to develop their ITS systems and services. Then the last one I would like to mention here is the startup community. The startup community has been a, an area where we wanted to bring the innovation coming from startups closer to the activities of the traditional ITS industry that Urtico has been uh, representing for 30 years. So bringing this innovation is giving us an opportunity to learn about new areas, new areas which are maybe not necessarily linked to our core business, but which is, will have an impact on our core business. So it's, um, it's mainly about uh, innovation for, for the future. It's about uh, uh, transforming your activities for the future and looking at new opportunities to develop the industry. Because there are a lot of developments happening and we see that in all sectors, and to be part of this transformation, to be part of the trans uh, disruption, we, it's important that we as a community is working closely together and uh, developing uh, the innovations for tomorrow's journey. So I'm very much uh, looking forward to working closer with uh, Kazan. I'm very much looking forward to visiting Kazan again. It's a fantastic place. And uh, I am very honored to be also participating at the Kazan Digital Week in September this, this, this year. Thank you very much. Благодарю, господин Бансгард, за содержательное выступление. К сожалению, время вам выделили очень мало. Ну, а вопрос поступил очень серьезный. Как у нас обстоят дела с созданием транспортной платформы? Ну, конечно, понятие такое интересное. Мы знаем, что разговор идет о транспортной Эртика, разговор идет о транспортной скандинавских стран. Тема актуальна, и мы ее начинаем создавать, транспортную платформу. Поэтому ваш опыт был бы для нас очень такой содержательный. Thank you very much, Mr. Bonsgaard, for a very good presentation. I would like to ask you one of the questions that we have received, a very important one. Uh, we know about the topical area of the day calling tran called transportation platform. We know that Ertico is developing one. We know that our Scandinavian colleagues are having their own experience. We in here are developing something of our own. So we would be very much interested to hear what Ertico has done. And uh, could you please speak a little bit about your experience in this area? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Miniano. Um, so first of all, Ertico in itself is a platform for uh, eight sectors coming together, developing uh, ITS. So we have been doing this for 30 years and uh, together with our partners. What we have done on top of that is that we have developed uh, platforms for different areas, whether that being electromobility, mobility as a service, connected automated mobility, um, so, and others. So we, what we are doing is that at the moment, we are now working closely with the European Commission on developing the single platform for cooperative connected automated mobility. This is a work that is extremely important, bringing all the activities related to connected automated mobility together with all the stakeholders and looking at how can we target the research in this field in the future. But we have also other platforms for the, as I mentioned, the mobility as a service where we created the mass alliance, bringing all stakeholders together, looking at how can we 
develop new mobility solutions uh, in the field of, of mobility as a service where it's more user centric and targeting a, a, a very special demand from the cities, from the users on new innovative services and combining the existing modes of transport. So we are, we are working on uh, different uh, platforms in that sense. Uh, we have our vertical innovation platforms that are especially targeting in, in this direction on different specific topics. And uh, we are uh, working closely with, with you as, a, as one of our partners and with the other partners on uh, consolidating uh, the efforts. And uh, we are very much happy to work uh, closer with Kazan also on on uh, these developments in the future. Спасибо большое. Thank you very much. Uh, мы прощаемся, Якоб, и до встречи в сентябре. Thank you very much, Якоб. We are saying goodbye and and see you in September. Thank you very much. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Спасибо. Жду не с нетерпением. Наш следующий автомобильно дорожного государственного технического университета. Kazan uh, taking place act, uh, in discussions on ITS use and providing for comfort and safety of road traffic. Sultan Vladimirovich, I would invite you to give us an overview of development of ITS in Russia, possibly comparing domestic and international levels. Would you please? Uh, may I introduce myself, or I will be introduced? 
I have introduced you completely already. Well, thank you very much, we've got, and I'm very glad to participate in this event which you organize. It's a little bit unusual uh, project, but this is new reality, and uh, I am ready to present uh, my slideshow. So let me start my presentation. To clarify, uh, just can you see my presentation? Uh, dear colleagues, um, I was asked to uh, prepare a presentation about the nowadays situation with intellectual transportation systems in Russia. And I would like to uh, explain to you uh, my view. I have been involved in this topic from 2003. And uh, what we have seen in Russia during this time is very interesting. Uh, uh, and it's uh, interesting for us because we have an opportunity to see, to observe how state, uh, as a participant in this process, decided to use uh, state regulating agencies in order to introduce some legislation about intellectual transportation system and to finance into uh, intellectual transportation systems. This is a unique event because <clears throat> before in Russia, uh, we uh, usage of the intellectual uh, transportation systems was basically uh, initiatives of the subjects of federations on the regional level. So they decided themselves whether to invest or not invest. And we saw that it basically um, was about <coughs> management of the uh, city traffic. And uh, but the uh, auto automation of uh, traffic is part of intellectual systems, and this is the first time when we see that the state says, "So, uh, would you please uh, keep creating the unified standard solutions for the intellectual transportation systems?" So this is the key word: uh, typical or standardized solutions. So um, we um, uh, develop the mechanism of financial financing of project management of pilot projects and uh, uh, why we should keep it in mind all the time all these issues that's what i would like to talk about initially you have to understand what is the idea was in the very beginning when we start talking about intellectual transportation system uh, i mean how it was viewed by the by the state and we understood that the intellectual system it's not just for itself for the sake of having it it is not just about engineering solutions uh, in terms of developing different regions in the country. It's a part of the big, uh, complex, integrated system. And as a result, it should give us a new realities of how society should develop in the million plus cities and especially with the high density of population and the intellectual transportation system, one of the key instruments which would allow us to give new impetus for the development of the societies in different regions. So when state and government understood the intellectual transportation system, understood that it should be controlled by the government and state, we understand that it should be financed uh, through uh, state mechanisms in order to help development these systems in the different parts of the country. So these discussions which we have had uh, and we have now when we develop this concept, we started doing this several years ago and as a result we see that decisions were made and uh, from the state budget we start getting money uh, for uh, technical solutions, which we consider as the standard solutions for different regions of the country. Why? We need it because <coughs> we needed to uh, create a mechanism of the management of the transportation system uh, in Russia. Uh, which uh, is, uh, we, we, we didn't want to have a whole zoo of different technical solutions. We wanted to have a unified system. Before states started uh, participating in this, we saw that in different cities we had different solutions, we had different platforms in different places, different regions, and as a result, we got, as I said, huge zoo, where we talked a lot about these integrations, but never happened. State uh, government said we want 
the whole intellectual transplantation system all over the country, so far as we finance this project, they must be built according to the unified formula uni on the unified platform, which uh, simplifies the integration of new solutions everywhere. And uh, we wanted to integrate into the unified federal system of the transportation system, <coughs> which we have in Ministry of Transportation, and we have the automated system of traffic management in Russia. So that is why the intellectual transportation system <coughs> is not just uh, independent from other uh, tasks which we have. <coughs> it is an integrated part of the standardization which state now is actively developing, giving money for it and um, pays special attention to unification of these solutions. Unfortunately, during this last year, when we were defining what regions of Russia can get uh, budget money, uh, we lost focus on uh, unification. And, uh, well, now uh, some requirements to the regional projects of the intellectual transportation system. We have it in the, uh, our uh, rules and uh, regulations, and uh, oh, this on this slide you can see special measures which we developed in the Ministry of Transportation, and we have these guidelines now uh, approved and signed by the first deputy of the Minister of Transportation system in the Russian Federation. And these guidelines uh, have uh, become the foundation, the guideline uh, for our future work in the regions of Russian Federation. And according to these programs, we are ready to give money from the budget. So uh, um, the financing depends on the size of the regions, and we have all of them. Uh, in our project, we have different regions, we have different requirements, but inside of each of these guidelines, we had the application one, as we call it, which uh, required uh, a mandatory uh, self um, research or self analysis of what resources they have. And we saw that each region organized this work in different ways. Some regions uh, uh, try to manipulate with statistics. Why? Because if uh, this region, for example, was successful in this area before this national project, so they were supposed to get less money from the budget because they had already advanced. And so they showed statistically well that they need even more money to develop further the intellectual transportation system. So this uh, drawback was because uh, all regions of Russian Federation forgot about the main idea of the state when they started financing this project on the original level. Uh, and uh, we underlined it several times when we talked about the, um, the documentation, about application forms and the projects of uh, modernization of existing systems and in pilot projects as well. And uh, later, when uh, we started uh, filing the applications for the finance, and this mechanism was built on the uh, expert opinion, uh, which uh, was invited by the Minister of Transportation. And uh, uh, we considered these applications for additional financing. I was an expert, as uh, you saw on the bottom, we see this technical expert committee, and I was one of these experts, and I participated in evaluation of a huge number of applications, about 30 of them. And uh, I have to admit that every time I tried I tried to explain to regions that you are asking money from the state budget, federal budget, to build a key turn system. It cannot happen uh, because for a city of uh, 500,000, 750,000 people, so you need about more than a billion rubles, and the government cannot uh, allot such uh, money 
so it was counterproductive approach so that is why i was trying to explain to other experts to my colleagues to other stakeholders let's talk let's discuss the main idea about uh, state financing we have to create standard platforms and uh, then based on this in regions uh, or you can organize subsystems uh, which uh, will further uh, get additional financing from uh, the, from the budget. So <clears throat> we can do it in the existing legislation. We can uh, build uh, special uh, services on this platform. We can attract investments, and uh, we can organize uh, a private-public partnership. It's a no. Normal practice all over the world how to develop the systems. The key problem for all of the stakeholders was that the part of these guidelines, part of these met met methods which we uh, propose, it was a system which was created as algorithm. So it's you see it on the slide. It's the architecture of the regional projects, and it was a deadline for, or not deadline, the, the dead end for everybody. You see, you have regional level, municipal level, and uh, it happened that you cannot follow all these rules which we have in this uh, system. But look at this, the upper side of it. We have the federal system. I will not just uh, dwell on the details. And you see, we have a unified platform for the uh, traffic management in the regions. So the key idea of the state was uh, to have this architecture as an integrated view, simplified very much, yes, but very, very typical understanding of what intellectual transportation system in every region should be. And this is an idea to show that the unified plat platform for intellectual transportation system and uh, the, this integra integration is uh, our main goal of the state for which we uh, government gives money that is why when very often i was asked well but we cannot build all this com using the state money on uh, it's a, a level of the subsystems of the telecommunication uh, the, the different different other systems and i always uh, answer that it is not the uh, purpose of the state financing uh, state wanted to get about 60 70 regions with the standardized uh, technical solutions which would alive uh, which would allow in uh, real time to see what's going on with the transportation system in a region and to interfere, to help, to get the feedback and accumulate the database for the uh, big data um, management system. And um, we they wanted to uh, collect this data, process this data, analyze it, and help regions to develop this uh, system. And uh, unfortunately, it was for forgotten several times. So, and it showed us that most of the applications. So you see. We have applications for the 100% financing. And when the regions were asking for 100% financing in most applications, they didn't have this, uh, any solutions for the upper level of this architecture, which I showed you in the previous slide. So we uh, understood that only 5% of applications had uh, correct ideas about what we wanted. It's bad, but the worst was the fact that we didn't have possibility to have a dialogue with the applicants, because as you remember, in the guidelines, we also had uh, a paragraph about the level of qualification of people who would develop it. And when we analyzed it, that we saw that um, the qualified people, so these are IT people, these are programmers, these are specialists in the microprocessors, in vending, but they're not specialists in the transportation technologies. So that is why this 
integrated platform solutions did not take into account our priorities, professional priorities. Of course, most of the participants uh, uh, were uh, claiming to get uh, money to develop the subsystem, and they explain it why they need these subsystems, and mainly for the development of the automatic system of uh, traffic management. Well, we understood. They understood that using budget money, even regional budget money, you ha they had to organize the subsystem, which uh, non-commercial systems. And uh, not a lot of people understood that we're talking about future, about strategic development. And so far as we talk about future, distant future, we have to train people, we have to train specialists. And uh, uh, let me say again that working together with the Trans Minister of Transportation, in order to develop the guidelines for the specialists who work in the intellectual transportation system, these all guidelines must be unified and standardized based on which every region should develop their own um, minor documents. So we saw that when you see, look at the uh, price of the turnkey creation of the system uh, on, on the stage of um, development for the 500,000, 750,000, it's about 1.3 billion rubles. We saw that most of the um, uh, applications uh, we are asking money to develop the subsystems, but not for the platform solutions. Although a number of regions did uh, take into account our recommendations and presented, uh, presented quite reasonable solutions, engineering solutions. We explained to them, if you don't follow our guidelines, you have serious risks uh, connected with the lack of uh, financing, and so please don't rely on the Fed, federal budget so much. The uh, uh, complete and uh, federal financing is not possible even if uh, you, with the help of the regional budget, it is still not enough. We need five to seven years, but most probably 10 years. And we didn't see these roadmaps uh, for future in most of the applicants. But we do want to have this dialogue and we understand that this is possible in future, and those applications which we supported, these were the applications in which we saw the possibility of development of how this uh, intellectual uh, system can be developed, what specialists will be used, what services will be created, uh, what results uh, we will get and what benefits we will get. And from an experience which we observed, we saw that none of the projects could be called as a completely ready and um, for the for getting federal money. And it was unpleasant surprise when we understood that state budget is ready to pay, and uh, but for some reason the regions uh, hoped that the, the more money they ask, the more they will pay. But let me just explain. Uh, regions will uh, regions will be limited in their I mean claims for the money. If some regions have uh, integrated uh, solutions, they potentially can get uh, the government financial support. Uh, if uh, regions uh, don't do it, don't prepare, don't prepare these uh, satisfactory solutions for the integrated platforms, well, they will not get a chance to get the federal financing. So as a result, unfortunately, uh, we saw that uh, and see now that uh, uh, we manipulate with the statistics, with the numbers and everything, and very confusing. But let me show you the clear picture on this slide. Federal level was limited from 150 
to 400 million rubles given for quite long the period, three years. And this was the period during which you could have created a unified architecture of the upper level. And this was the priority uh, which we kept in mind when we were planning federal financing. And we also as, uh, pointed out that it's very important to also use regional budgets uh, with the support of the federal financing in order to uh, uh, so that about 600 million people for the period oh rubles uh, for five to seven years be spent on a financing of the next level of subsystems and it became possible because we talked to the regions we understood that uh, on the regional level uh, specialists understood what we want from them but without upper level this level this conversation was uh, hopeless and uh, it was very confusing and now the result is we saw that a very good ideas uh, which we had in the very beginning, uh, we saw that uh, private business started co-financing and to these systems and uh, we saw some projects up to 300 million rubles, again for three to seven years uh, projects and these are the uh, business companies, we have groups of these business, uh, private businesses, they are ready to participate and uh, they're ready to participate in 600 million uh, projects. So if you see this, all this data, so we see that these 3 to 3.5 billion rubles, which we need to develop in the region, uh, where we have um, about 1 million uh, people living in a uh, certain region, uh, it can be this idea can be applicable to any size of uh, um, region and this is what uh, we see what is uh, on the slide through the uh, right side of my um, slide so we have the uh, functional integration platforms so we have so-called transportation speed corridors and uh, we can transfer data to different data uh, collect center, to road police, for example, uh, in order to take care of the road safety or the traffic safety. And uh, it will prepare us to data exchange with the federal center. And this success, uh, which you see in the... Uh, uh, right part of my slide. So this is the, it shows how government from the federal budget is ready to finance a regional transportation system. And part, uh, this is just part of our analysis which we conducted and uh, we'll be ready to uh, issue some kind of a digest our summary of our analysis it's a very useful analysis it's based on practical communication with the lower level uh, with the regions municipalities and we want to explain to regions how to develop intellectual systems in correct way within the timelines which we have but unfortunately what i see now we are losing time we already lost two or three years but now we have a chance to catch up this is the end of my presentations i was very happy to uh, participate in this webinar i'm ready to answer your questions well, frankly speaking, we have tons of questions. Uh, why? Because uh, you are a specialist and uh, uh, there are questions about uh, how you take into account, for example, the pavement uh, the traffic and uh, railroad traffic. So we, we understand that you can ask a lot of questions and, of course, uh, uh, water transportation, uh, water waste transportation. Let me ask more uh, general question. Uh, what are the obstacles uh, for development of uh, these systems in the regions? Lack of financing, uh, bad road infrastructure, 
uh, not well developed uh, management system, not enough competent specialists, not enough well trained specialists. So, what are the main obstacles? Just can you be brief? And uh, so, thank you. Well, I, I will try to be brief. Can you hear me? Can you hear me well? Yeah. I uh, let me just answer that. Uh, what 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 are the obstacles? What uh, stops us from further development? Main uh, obstacle is a lack of standardized way how to understand what is intellectual transportation system. And the reason of it is we do not have enough highly trained specialists in this area. In any region where we go, all tell of us, well, we understand what is intellectual transportation system, but they have their own ideas and they are very, very different. And all these regions in Russia don't talk to each other. Let me remind again that the state invested money into unified system, standardized system, and uh, we and we have uh, the pavement traffic and the sidewalk traffic. So, uh, no, we don't have it in our uh, current documents. We have different modules. We take into account them. Uh, we have uh, different uh, different other documents and uh, guidelines uh, for new participants of the road uh, traffic. So, uh, these are it's uh, very, very important and uh, we don't have uh, unified opinion about it. Uh, we uh, try to work with experts. As for the railroad transportation, the integrated transportation uh, railroad systems, we don't take them into account. Uh, I am telling you about what uh, we do about traditional traffic. And uh, it is not about the government financing. We try to find uh, three sources of financing. So federal, um, uh, regional and municipal plus uh, private um, financing. And uh, when it comes to the railroad transportation, we hope on the private business. Uh, we see what's going on in Moscow transportation junction. We know that they work very intensively. I don't know the results of this work, just to be brief. Oh, well, thank you very much. Uh, we've been working together for a long time, and uh, uh, it's a pity that we still don't have the unified policy. Yes, we agree with you completely. Uh, we still don't have common view, unfortunately. But I do hope we will do it. It's a very important moment when regions start understanding that this is important to have this unified um, professional opinion about it. So we will definitely talk about it in first. Please be in touch. So in September, remember, please, you are our main participant in all our events. А теперь предлагаю дать слово бизнесу. Не секрет, что компания Huawei – перспективный игрок на мировом рынке интеллектуальных транс-систем в области разработки информационно-коммуникационных технологий и решений. В нашем вебинаре участвует Игорь Олегович Акулинин, советник генерального директора компании Huawei в регионе Евразии. В его компетенции входит управление связи. Igor Alegovich Akunin, the advisor for the director of highway company. And uh, Igor, please, the uh, floor is yours. And I hope that with your help, we will understand the level of the communication development, especially in the transportation systems, please.
Good still morning, dear colleagues. I would like to share the latest news with you about the development of CV2X in China. Let me have my presentation on the screen. I would like to share Huawei experience, and not just Huawei, but overall about the way CV2X is being piloted in China. I will speak a little bit about world trends as well as outlook for the future. Well, my presentation consists of three parts. The first is CV2X in China today and tomorrow. And then I will talk about specific solutions from Huawei, a small part for better understanding, as well as CV2X project in uh, the city of Usi in uh, PRC. Well, how did it all start? It all started with a strategy. And in China, the strategy is developed by the Commission on the National Development and Reform of People Republic of China, a large entity responsible not just for the development technology, uh, digital technologies, but overall development of China. And uh, their target, uh, CV2X or LTE V2X, is to reach 90% coverage until 2020. You might have heard about the China 2035 program, thus they have digitized the results. Thus, by 2020, the share of smart connected vehicles needs to amount to 50 uh, to 50% by 2025 all new cars should be intellectually connected vehicles non-connected new vehicles and by 2035 the ITS should be rolled out at the national scale I have some links here you, you can take a look later uh, an imported state entity has decided, thus what happened next? Ministries, the IT as well as industry ministries have allocated frequencies for NFC. We're connecting with the presentation. Uh, do you see it now? Please take it full screen. Let me try again. Do you see it now? Could you please put it full screen? Sorry for some technical issues. And illustrating what I've been talking about, uh, let us go back to what was happening at the level of industrial ministries, allocation of frequencies, uh, licensing of activities, and the decision was made that demonstration areas will be incentivized by the state, respective Ministry of Industry as well as IT. Let's call it a digital uh, industry, where, or in our case, it's a Ministry of Trade and Industry plus a digital ministry together. Have identified what technologies to be used, at what highways, at what cities, as well as the level of coverage, 30% by 2020, high-speed highways were allocated for testing this, and they are shown here. I would like to speak more about urban testing, but I would obviously talk about highways as well. Why highways? Because China is getting ready for Olympic Games uh, to be hosted in 2022, and they want to roll it out along highways. Thus, Ministry of Transportation engaged initiating the construction of these 12 intellectual highways in nine provinces, as well as around Beijing. And the first highway is the highway of Yangchong to be launched rather soon, almost ready. I will be demonstrating you a short video. 
some 200 kilometers will be fully prepared. LT was chosen as technology, wider represented one. There is an understanding that it would soon move to 5G, but they chose LTE as they needed something on the spot now because there is quite a good coverage all over the federal and various regional roads as well around China. Right now, technical pilots as well as verification of various business questions is taking place. The cities that will be rolling out LTVTX upon completion of pilot testing within the city of Usi. Investors and operators were chosen, various automotive corporations as well as cities. And the first city it all started, it, it's a place called Usi, Uxi, uh, not far away from Shanghai, chosen because of very good business hub legislation allowing implementation of the companies that are engaged are also present in Shanghai. Industrial ecosystem is growing quite rapidly. By 2019, it was already announced the joint launch of CV2X and the framework of the program. You see names of important Chinese uh, companies, BYD, that is doing number seven, that is doing the mobile. And the latest news in May, Huawei came into the market as OEM producer of digital systems. Our company is a high silicon with a brand of high car. This is the latest news. I was unable even to add this as into the list. What's Huawei's vision? We are supporting ADAS, but we believe that ADAS is a first stage of development of the manageable and autonomous transportation. But our objective is to go to CV2X, which provides for a better backbone for joint communication, increase uh, transportation, provides for safety and security. Here we are talking about ecosystems because yes, autonomous transportation systems are very good. But then when we are looking at the industry overall interaction of their road, network, cloud platforms, we see that this can be very well implemented only as a result of the V2X system, which is why we are supporting LTE V2X, because we believe this would allow us to build a digital society. The fact that we are now beginning to see automotive vehicles, that is very good step. We are supporting this as first steps moving towards into the ITS, joint ITS. I'm talking about the role of Huawei. You have seen here a representation of the ecosystem. We are present in every element of the ecosystem. It's a conscious choice of ours. It is very important that in ITS, where a lot is around security, we need to understand what's happening at every chain. And for us to be able to provide a full coverage, uh, we are present at every step, beginning with the chipset, based on the Ballon uh, 755, uh, using all the frequent, supporting all frequencies. We are using OBU, which is already developed in the vehicles. We are producing antennas, the smart antennas, as well as solutions, RSU, the very first uh, global solution that works in two uh, frequencies, LTE and PC5. And I have uh, also just said that we are now entered automotive OEM market. Next time, I'll be happy to share with you more of our news that have taken place. This demonstrates the seriousness of our intentions around building intellectual transportation systems. Let me now speak about Wuxi. In 2017, ver technological verification started. In 2018, uh, those steps were taking place at the close. Uh, 17 uh, was 
tested and verified at closed isolated sites. 2018, we started X vehicle network pedestrian, tested 40 cases on city streets, and then we started looking into business models in year 2019 so as to come into commercial operation in 2020. Now, the way it looked like three stages, commercial testing, as I have already said, we were doing that at 400 traffic lights, 260 kilometers of roads, equipment, functional verification. Right now, we are in the full-scale construction stage, 1,000 traffic lights, 500 roads. And the third stage, it will start tomorrow, 2,000 traffic lights, all of the city. We would be covering highways that are entering the city. And we would start getting understanding of how business models would perform that we are just testing now. As I have said, this is an ecosystem project, so I have already presented how we understand the ecosystem. All the partners, 23 participation organizations on the right, six key players, the operator, mobile operator, then the state as the Ministry of Transportation, police, which is a data center, Huawei, as well as colleagues that are producing OEM vehicles. And the total number of participants is 23. Uh, we have tested 17 scenarios. You can look at the list on the right. They are a rather standard. One way or the other, every country tests them. But we needed to test them within our ecosystem. In real life, you see that's an urban environment. Uh, we obviously chose a relatively young city with rather low level of traffic, but at the same time, it's it's a it's a normal city. It has pedestrians. It has regular vehicles. Tests were done in order for us to start understanding what kind of legislative solutions are necessary based on CV2X areas. We have prepared various specifications about the level of applications as well as uh, data exchange standards. You see respective publications. Interfaces were identified for respective broad uh, sign controllers and the respective legislative work was done to set the standards. A respective 17 cases were standardized, which means that all OEMs, all producers now are to support specific type of uh, communication and respective interface so that those cases would be automatically implemented in CV2X systems. And you see the greater part is around security. A V2V, a vehicle to infrastructure then, various warnings. Uh, second stage is effectiveness, it's about the green wave, uh, various uh, as well as road uh, signage, uh, traffic jams, etc., as well as some information payments on near field communications. A significant amount of work was done. It was approved by the state uh, through adoption of respective technological standards. Here is a video I would like to demonstrate to you, a pilot area in the city itself. Yes, a BYD vehicle being tested. Uh, an interaction with the infrastructure. With the traffic lights, cameras, interestingly, interaction with pedestrians, uh, vehicle to pedestrian is being done through the camera. The communication goes to the camera. The camera communicates information on whether it sees or doesn't see a pedestrian that might be causing threat. That information is being transferred. Uh, passed on to the vehicle interaction with an ambulance, a sign is sent that you should uh, pull over, smart overtaking, which tells you whether you can be overtaking or cannot, what kind of vehicle is that, whether somebody would be alighting or not. As we see this, 
a vehicle on the left that uh, case about pedestrians interactions organized through the camera in the network So that's 170 square kilometers, 240 traffic lights, 10,000 vehicles engaged in the test. As I have promised, we are, let me speak about our getting ready to go to the highways. This is not as exciting. It's a vehicle with CV2X equipment. Our partner here was Audi. So the vehicle is driving. You see, it's used together with autonomous driving. There is an automotive engine. Plus, there is interaction with the infrastructure as well as with other vehicles. See our RSU device. There is a camera. Interaction is organized over LTE network. 5G network is being built uh, rather quickly, but it's not yet covering 100% of the roads that we are using on LTE. Now coming back to Russia, what barriers do we see for CV2X development? Based on Chinese experience, we see that in the corporate ITS solutions, it's a long-term capital intensive program and success very much depends on engagement of the state. The structure is uh, rather complex in Russia, in various in cities, number of operators, there are challenges in interaction be, of one with the other. The key question would be how the funding construction of the to X, how would be managing, how would be paying for this, what are the business models that would be in use, there are not that many of them. And technologies are not yet developing too quickly because CV2X requires a lot of capital investment, which is why participation of the state is important. Organizing the industries in a way that they should be innovative that, as we understand, and should be a technology of one single standard. It should be supported by the state. It should be integrated into existing, uh, not integrated, some proprietary, some are rather old. And then there is also a certain challenge in compatibility of standards. Uh, Russians, various Russian standards, uh, CV2X in China and elsewhere. It's important that we start developing a single standard uh, that would allow for connect interconnectivity. That would be it on my part. Thank you very much, dear colleagues. Ready to respond to any questions. Thank you very much, Igor Olegovich. We have a number of questions. And you have partly responded, one, uh, speaking about the possibility of the regions and whether they are capable of implementing projects that are being implemented in China. The approach is quite right, uh, that uh, testing areas are identified where technology is being well learned and uh, streamlined and uh, as you have correctly said uh, the result is so quickly achieved in china thanks to centralization very much so sir uh, state program was adopted uh, quite proper answer sir uh, state program organizational structure uh, I believe we should be using the experience of yours, because you are a general partner. We would be using that for preparation towards the September event, and maybe even earlier, at earlier webinars. We are very, very ready, sir. If you or colleagues are interested, we are ready to present in more, more detailed information on a specific narrow topics that I have now covered. 
in my overview. Thank you very much. We do have more questions. Thank you. Thank you for your presentation and goodbye. Uh, dear colleagues, thanks to the first three speakers, we are now having understanding about modern intellectual transportation system and mobility and uh, theory, and now we should be looking at the applications, even though our colleague in the previous presentation has spoken about this. Unpiloted systems, various components, companies that are engaged in these technologies are forecasting that in coming uh, three, four years, uh, self-driving cars will become a reality on our streets. One of such companies is Yandex. Uh, Yandex and the Republic of Tatarstan signed an agreement about development of uh, unmanned vehicles and in the city of Annapolis in Tatarstan is the first city in Europe where you can use Yandex on uh, unmanned vehicles and we will now have the head of the department of developing business of on pilotless vehicles Mr. Artem Alexandrovich Fokin. Uh, good afternoon, dear colleagues. Uh, today I would like to talk about uh, the, uh, our Yandex uh, projects and uh, about our success, which we got uh, during uh, latest years. So what we do, we develop uh, the, and the scale uh, solutions for the uh, vehicles. So uh, we have the robot driver, robotic driver, who is who is able to drive any uh, vehicle on the roads. So what uh, <clears throat> uh, we've done during this project, so we have launched a uh, service, uh, full skate uh, service uh, taxi driver robot, and uh, we are very proud of it. So we work together with Tatarstan and with uh, Inapolis. <clears throat> uh, we have drive less vehicles, we have unmanned vehicles there with just an engineer on the passenger seat. We work all year round and uh, we already had 8,000 trips with passengers which were very happy and satisfied and we regularly test and improve our technology on the road. It's in uh, Russia, in Israel and United States. Why we started this complicated uh, project uh, and how we uh, achieved such success, uh, which we started in 2016. We started as the uh, search engine and we have accumulated huge uh, technological data in such areas as machine learning, computer vision, of course navigation, mapping. And based on this knowledge, we were able to create uh, uh, quite efficient technology 
which now can um, uh, independently cope with the uh, challenges of, of, the, of the traffic situations. And we already mentioned in Naples where we have it and in uh, some parts of such American cities as Las Vegas, we have about 300 engineers and the instruments and the infrastructure which we use <laughs> We uh, we involved more than 5,000 uh, Yandex engineers. <clears throat> As I said, we are creating uh, ideal driver, a robotic driver. It consists of two parts: it's uh, a software and hardware. And uh, our software is all by ourselves. And as for the hardware, so we develop it, and sometimes we use components from uh, other manufacturers. So. This is how our most uh, popular prototype of the unmanned vehicle look like. So this is the uh, vehicle which is uh, equipped with the uh, computer module. And uh, in this vehicle, we also have four uh, radars and six cameras and six lasers. And using the sensors, car gets uh, all necessary information about the environment. This information is being processed in the uh, central computer, and then it sends commands to uh, vehicle, allows it to move on the road. If you go deeper, so software, of course, is the main element of technology for unmanned vehicles, and it's based on the <clears throat> technologies which we it started developing since 1997. Well, and the process of uh, making decisions uh, by vehicle uh, has four elements which are continuously uh, performed by the uh, vehicle. First of all, this is the localization. So the vehicle and the robot must understand uh, up to one centimeter precision where it, it is. Satellite navigation is not uh, really reliable in order to localize vehicle and we use our own maps and the vehicle based its solutions on our own maps when the vehicle understands its location using the recognition module we vehicle understands location then the classification of all objects around it in its environment within the 200 meters radius uh, dynamic um, uh, stationary objects is it a vehicle is it a human being uh, no no sound no, Artem, no sound
Uh, sorry, dear colleagues, so we had some technical hiccups, so I'm back. I, uh, I was talking about our software and the prediction module, or forecasting module, the most uh, uh, complicated uh, element because vehicle must understand where it is and must understand the environment on the road, how it's going to change, and it has to predict the possible changes. In order to provide correct work of this module, uh, for such companies as our company, uh, we have to drive millions of kilometers on the roads, collecting data about the behavior of the participant traffic participants. Based on this knowledge, we can uh, uh, provide a very precise predictions of the possible road situation development. And after we understand this, uh, uh, the planning model kicks in and the uh, uh, car calculates uh, dozens of possible trajectories and it processes every second and according to the requirements of the uh, rules and regulations. And if suddenly uh, something happens and the optimal trajectory is not possible, so the next tra trajectory kicks in and we have about dozens of them. I have mentioned uh, that uh, we not just develop technology, we implement this technology. And in Apolis, in Skolkova, we already had 8,000 trips with the passengers, passengers, and we've been doing it since 2018. We're regularly testing technologies in Moscow, Detroit, and Tel Aviv. And uh, uh, every week we have 130,000 kilometers on our vehicles, and uh, our vehicles are used 24-7. So this is the uh, graph which shows uh, the usage of our vehicles. And in kilometers, beginning from December 2017 to May 2020, and we have already driven 5,000, uh, 5 million kilometers uh, for our whole fleet of our cars. And uh, I don't think there are a lot of drivers, uh, human um, drivers, who drove in their life 5 million kilometers. But our robot continues driving, continues collecting data uh, from the behavior, about the behavior of uh, uh, road uh, traffic participants. And uh, the system is improved with every kilometer, which is important. We do it not just by ourselves. Uh, in Last year, we signed an agreement with uh, Hyundai uh, Mobis. So it's a part of the Hyundai group. And our current cars, which we have, uh, unmade, uh, uh, built uh, with their help, and uh, um, the software system is ours, but how this system interacts uh, with uh, the elements of the car itself, uh, well, it was developed together with the Hyundai Mobis engineers. Our uh, engineers uh, worked in Korea, their engineers worked in Moscow. The last group of Korean uh, engineers left uh, Moscow just one day before we closed the borders because of the uh, epidemic. But we have to say that we have we had done a lot before that, uh, and uh, it was uh, done in very well, and we're very proud of uh, our results. Uh, now our fleet has uh, 115 vehicles, we continue increasing it, and by the end of the year, we'll have more than 200 of them. The fleet will be based in three countries. I named them uh, Russia, United States, and uh, Israel. And now I would like to ask uh, organizers to show a video on which you can see how our vehicles uh, move on the, on the roads in Nevada, in Las Vegas. Uh, they <clears throat> I don't have this regulation about uh, having an engineer in the vehicle. And, and so we use advanced scenario of testing, and we believe that very soon in Russia we can start testing our technology in the same way. So please show the video. Thank you.
Благодарю, Артем Александрович. Наверное, немного вопросов. Thank you, Artem. So probably some questions, because we have been talking about unmanned vehicles for a long time. A lot of people don't believe in uh, unmanned uh, uh, vehicles uh, in the roads, but we see that the future is very promising. So we have only one, I would say, psychological question, not technical question. So still the question is, we, we do understand that the unmade vehicles is our future. How psychologically can you prepare a person to use vehicle? Because a lot of people are afraid. I understand you're not psychologists, but can you answer this question? I can. Or you have no way out uh, but to answer this question. That it's not about answering this question. I have seen many times the reaction of people uh, who found themselves for the first time in the unmanned vehicle, especially when there is nobody behind the wheel, uh, steering wheel. In Las Vegas, we uh, gave, uh, we drove about 150 journalists, and it was the first time when they were in the vehicle uh, without driver. So their action is always the same. First three minutes, a person is just looking around very nervous and uh, but in literally in two three minutes a person understands that uh, what he's feeling it's just e exactly what he uh, experienced many times yes he's on the back seat in the traffic accelerates uh, brakes uh, observes rules and regulations stops before the uh, red light so it, it is completely the same impression. So a person relaxes, gets his uh, smartphone, start playing with his uh, gadgets, and it's just this, well, the fears come from lack of, of experience. As soon as people start experiencing the advantages of this technology, I believe that this there will be no fears, and you, you will, will nobody will be forced to get this uh, robotic taxi drive taxi trip well thank you very much I, it's not our first meeting and uh, we have great future and i believe that uh, you and yandex company will support us in uh, september forum and uh, <clears throat> we will talk with our foreign partners with our technical specialists and we are very much interested in building our future partnership relationship and i believe we will continue thank you very much for sure thank you thank uh, you tatarstan for the support thanks to which we started uh, using our uh, unmade fleet in europe and it's very good and we hope that our fruitful cooperation will be going on i haven't seen the logo of tatarstan on your vehicle maybe you will well we can discuss it uh, th thank you thank you see you see you soon uh, we introduce next speaker so this is our last presentation it's about very important element of the uh, transportation system the telematic control uh, which provides the necessary information for the safe usage of vehicles and kazan telematic company it implements the federal projects and develops and integrates the special uh, <coughs> telematic system this uh, company has a lot of competences and experience in practical implementation of the concept of the safe road traffic in russia and in our webinar we have the general director of this company marcel Lidmanzianov. please uh, marcel uh, the floor is yours
Добрый день, уважаемые участники вебинара. Большое спасибо за возможность принять участие в вебинаре по интеллектуальным транспортным системам, который организован в рамках форума «Казан Digital Week». У нас в эфире присутствует сегодня это я, Марсель Нигмедзянов, генеральный директор компании «Казан Телематика». Также со мной в эфире Алексей Сергеевич Нащекин. Это глава концертной национальной климатической системы. Марсель, Вы подождите же? секундочку. Да, вас хорошо слышно. Мы сейчас попросим, чтобы переводчик подключился, он вас не перевел. Сейчас, секунду. Хорошо. Returns. Good afternoon, dear participants of the webinar. Thank you very much for the possibility to take part in this webinar, preparing towards Kazan Digital Week. Uh, it's uh, Marcel Nigmedzian, Director General of Kazan Telematica, as well as Alexey Nishukin, the head of National Telematic Systems concern. It was great to hear previous speakers. I believe each one of them has organically spoken about methodology, approaches, etc. We as representatives of the business community working on development of intellectual transportation systems from 2015, we would like to demonstrate uh, the connectivity of vehicles and how it uh, leads uh, to the state of good information. We would like to demonstrate a short video, not pictures, not drawings, but uh, videos of real-life testing on our piloting ground in Kazan, the developments that we intend to develop, introduce as. So Mr. Renkaziev has spoken that intellectual transportation system when developing, growing throughout the country should be connected. Vehicles should be receiving information not only from each other, but interacting with infrastructure that is in place in various regions. We call this project Smart Street of Russia, the way we see it. It's a very simple vehicle, as you see, it, that has a respective device in place. Uh, it's connected to the platform. There is a tablet there. What is it? The vehicle is coming on the street with infrastructure. It's interacting with the platform. Uh, 
audio quality is low. Receiving information about recommended speed. We can receive information. Uh, there is a pos there is a technology of free flow. On, uh, as well as various data on safe exit and entrance on the highway. Well, dear colleagues, as I have said before, it's a short presentation, quite practical. The way we see the development of ITS in the future, we believe that connectivity allows the possibility of getting proper information. Clearly, a lot of decisions are to be made. What route is to follow? Uh, either the one chosen by Chinese colleagues, CV2X, or the way European area is using DSRC technology. These questions uh, would have to be addressed jointly. There are questions to be addressed, things to work on. We believe the future is for open technologies that allow us to know more, to know faster, whenever is necessary to have things just in time. Thank you very much. I'm happy to answer your questions. Two, one live. Thank you very much, Marcel Shatovich. Uh, sorry to have had so little time dedicated to your presentation. You are short and uh, precise. We have accentuated practical implementation. Marcel Shatovich, a question uh, to you would be preceded by some comments of our webinars uh, saying that it's a pity that um, myself as a moderator is not giving a possibility to respond to questions that we are receiving from them in the chat. That's a first experience of ours. We understand that we could probably organize interaction uh, in the future. We wanted to see questions that speaks about the fact that ITS is very topical. Thus, Natalia, uh, we wouldn't respond to your questions. We would uh, be grateful if you write all of them in uh, proper uh, chat and uh, send them to us, but pass it on. And a question to you, Moshet Shatovich. What are we accentuating? Smart streets, smart car? Or should we accentuate both? Because if we accentuate both and try to develop 
uh, but at the same time, uh, that would require quite a lot of funding. So it's honestly my question. Thank you very much for the question. Let me share my opinion. I believe that infrastructure must provide for the speed and the level of communication that is necessary for the vehicle to be a good player in the system. We believe that a price increase of the vehicle would not be significant. It's important for us for the car to be connected but should be cheap and I believe that ownership of the car would probably become a thing of the past when vehicles will be rented uh, as a service connected to the infrastructure. Thus, the only thing that the person would have to do is just to get it. Uh, so first thing, it should be the infrastructure plus a connected vehicle, but the vehicle itself should not be inc more expensive. The more connected it is, uh, it's obviously a problematic issue. And the next stage would be a solution on technology. What standards we will choose and the maximum decrease of price of the connected vehicles.
Dear colleagues, uh, this new webinar format, a new platform with various rooms, Russian and English, probably has some drawbacks. But one way or the other, we would continue working, we would continue running webinars. We would be grateful if all participants would send their recommendations to our chat for us to be able to integrate this into the practice of our upcoming webinars as well as a conference we are working towards. I would like to thank our speakers for a wonderful presentation. And we do hope that in September we'll be meeting at Kazan Digital Week 2020. I would also like to thank particularly the participants of the webinar that have dedicated time to us today. Thank you very much. See you soon.